World War I left approximately 15 million people dead, making it one of the deadliest wars ever. Patriotism and social pressure led men from lower to upper class to volunteer, thinking it would be a short, glorious war and that they would come home as heroes, yet many wouldn't, becoming part of the lost generation. Of these people, there was one person whose death shocked the scientific community and was so tragic that British scientists successfully petitioned the war office to revise its recruitment policies so that promising scientists would not be assigned to combat roles. Science fiction author Isaac Asimov remarked years later, in view of what he might still have accomplished, his death might well have been the most costly single death of the war to mankind generally. This person is Henry Mosley. He was born on November 23, 1887 in Weymouth, Dorset, England, to Henry Nottage Mosley and Amabel Quinn Jeffries. His family tree contained many scientists as his father was a biology professor at the University of Oxford and was part of the 1872-1876 HMS Challenger expedition whose discoveries were foundational to the field of oceanography. His mother was the daughter of John Quinn Jeffries, a Welsh biologist known for his contributions in marine biology. However, he would not spend much time with his father because in 1891, when the young Mosley was only four years old, his father passed, leaving behind his mother and two older sisters. His older sister tragically died during her teenage years, while his sister Marguerite taught him how to identify plants, birds, and various wildlife, piquing his scientific curiosity at an early age. He was quickly seen as a promising student and was awarded a scholarship to attend Eden College, whose alumni include many prime ministers, royal family members, writers, etc., but during World War One lost more than a thousand of its former pupils. He would go on to Trinity College at the University of Oxford, graduating with first class honours in physics in 1910. Thereafter, he immediately headed to the University of Manchester to work as an assistant to Ernest Rutherford, known for his groundbreaking work in understanding the structure of atoms, discovering that they have a small dense nucleus at their centres with positively charged protons and orbited by negatively charged electrons. He was also known for his work on how certain elements can undergo radioactive decay. Rutherford tasked him with studying radioactive isotopes, yet after three years in 1913, returned to Oxford as he was more interested in X-ray research. Dmitri Mendeleev created the periodic table in 1869 with the elements arranged by atomic mass. Yet due to inconsistencies, scientists believed it should be ordered by atomic number, which is the number of protons in the nucleus of its atoms, but had no way to experimentally prove this. Mosley used a device to direct high-energy electrons at elements ranging from hydrogen, aluminum, potassium, iron, gold, and whatever element he could find. Upon hitting each element, he measured the amount of X-rays emitted using a spectrometer. What he discovered was that the X-ray frequency or energy, that is, the number of x-rays released, is proportional to its atomic number, and this became known as Mosley's Law. Less x-rays released means less protons in the element's nucleus and vice versa. With this discovery, the periodic table was rearranged based on atomic number rather than atomic weight, and it allowed scientists to make predictions based on other elements through their atomic numbers. His work influenced subsequent discoveries in quantum, nuclear, and atomic physics. World War I broke out in the summer of 1914. Despite friends and family begging him not to join, he felt a sense of duty to do so. He volunteered as a signaling officer in the Royal Engineers of the British Army, tasked with sending communications in Morse code and semaphore. By 1915, he finished his training and was shipped to the front lines. The war had grinded to a stalemate, with both sides dug in. The British War Cabinet hatched a bold plan masterminded by a certain Winston Churchill for a naval assault on the Dardanelles Straits, followed by a land invasion on the Gallipoli Peninsula to eventually capture Constantinople and knock the Ottomans out. Yet a combination of poor intel, logistics, incompetence, heavy resistance meant little progress after six months. By August, the British made a final attempt to break the deadlock through an amphibious landing at Sulva Bay. The commanding general was Frederick Stopford, who had never led men in battle and was only chosen due to his seniority. While initially successful, a lack of supplies and indecision meant they didn't press forward their advantage in one of the most incompetent feats of generalship not just in the campaign, but the entire war. Now that's saying something. Eventually, Ottoman reinforcements arrived, led by Mustafa Kemal, drove the British back to the same stalemate conditions elsewhere. During this stalemate, Henry Mosley, who just two years prior had made a breakthrough in the understanding of the periodic table, was shot in the head by a Turkish sniper as he was transmitting orders over the radio telephone. He was just 27 years old. 
A few months later, after approximately 250,000 casualties and 46,000 dead, the Allied force evacuated. His death prompted a massive outcry from the scientific community, and scientists like Rutherford successfully lobbied the British government to ban any promising or prominent scientist from being assigned to a combat role. Rutherford wrote, The loss of this young man on the battlefield is a striking example of the misuse of scientific talents. Experts believed had he survived, he would have received the 1916 Nobel Prize in Physics, which was not awarded to anyone. A year later, English physicist Charles Barkla received the award for his work on how X-rays were scattered by elements in unique patterns, built on the work of Mosley. Given his achievements in four years of postgraduate work, one might wonder what other discoveries might he have unlocked. I'll leave you with a quote from Robert Millikan, the 1923 Nobel laureate in physics, who wrote, A young man, 26 years old, threw open the windows through which we can glimpse the subatomic world with definitiveness and certainty, never dreamed before. Had the European war had no other result than snuffing out this young life, that alone would make it one of the most hideous and most irreparable crimes in history. If you found this video interesting, please comment, like, and share. This is Insight Saying, and thank you for watching.